Every 5th of May, people in the United States throw parties that include various Mexican scene foods such as tacos, enchiladas, nachos, and fajitas. Decorations can range from piñatas to various types of flags, Moroccans, cacti, food item cutouts, and items stereotypically associated with Mexico. Sadly, few people know what they are celebrating. In a May 2020 survey, YouGov discovered that 41% of people in the United States sing Cinco de Mayo is Mexico's Independence Day. Only 10% of people surveyed in a different poll the following year knew what it actually was. So let's explore what Cinco de Mayo actually is. Following the war between the United States and Mexico in 1848, Mexico surrendered vast sections of land. And there was a growing perception that the instability the country had suffered from since independence was no longer sustainable. The power of church and military had undermined the government and established different loyalties. They still lacked a coherent national identity to unify the people. After one last time, ousting the frequently disgraced Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, a new government assumed power in November 1855 under the liberal Juan Alvarez. The government included liberals like Benito Juarez, as well as moderate voices like Ignacio Comafort. Within weeks of assuming office, Juarez as Minister of Justice finally ended the separate military and ecclesiastical court system. Miguel Lerdo de Tejeda, meanwhile, called for the end of collective ownership of church and indigenous populations. The sin followed and brought about Alvarez's resignation in December 1856 and his replacement by Comfort. A year in the future, Mexico has received a new constitution that embraced many of the liberal reforms. Announced on February 5, 1857, the document brought new conflicts with the Catholic Church, threatening excommunication to anybody who took the oaths to the new constitution. Civil War, Guerrero de la Forma, followed when Comalford expressed his support in December for General Feliz Zuluga's plan of Tucubaya, which nullified the new constitution and called for a conservative Mexican government to come about. Conservative and liberal factions fought each other for the next three years. When the conflict started, liberals were at a disadvantage. They lacked experience and trained military professionals. However, throughout the conflict, they retained control of support of their recruits and the support in Custom House, collecting revenue with which to fund the war. While the liberals had the constitution of 1857 to rally around, the conservatives failed in the first year of the war to come up with a counter-constitution, leading to a revolt within the conservative faction. Among the figures emerging from that conflict was General Miguel Miramon. After much fighting over the next two years, the liberals slowly gained the upper hand 
In late 1860, the conservatives determined to surrender, accepting defeat in the war. However, some leading conservatives, including Miramar, departed Mexico for exile in Europe, where they soon made connections to plot their return. On January 11, 1861, Benito Juarez returned to Mexico City. The liberal constitutional government, based on the Constitution of 1857, had returned. The three years of war had brought Mexico to the verge of financial default on its foreign debt, the majority of which was in the hands of European investors, such as Great Britain, France, and Spain. As a result, Juarez decided in July 1861 to suspend debt payments for the next two years. European creditors were exasperated, especially France, which was not even the largest creditor. The Lincoln government offered to take on the Mexican debt in exchange for territorial collateral by Mexico, an obvious ploy to eventually expand into Mexican territory. The plan failed. Instead, the three major European creditors signed a tripartite agreement to force Mexico to honor its debt. While Great Britain and Spain had the goal to collect their debt, the French Emperor Napoleon III had other goals, including returning the conservative exiles to power and bringing political stability to Mexico with the introduction of a European prince on the Mexican throne. Having a colony in close proximity to Mexico, the Spanish fleet and expeditionary force arrived off Veracruz on December 14, 1861. They landed and had control of the city by December 17. The French and British forces arrived a few weeks later, in early 1862. At that point, the three powers once more publicly stated that their sole goal was to collect the European debt and not change the Mexican government. A false statement on the part of the French, as it turned out. In late January, Foreign Minister Manuel Doblado invited the representatives of the three powers to negotiate. By April 8, 9, 1862, the negotiations had failed because the French representative had shown himself resilient in demands as it became clear France had come to Mexico with other intentions in violation of the tripartite agreement. As a result, its allies determined to depart and Mexico threatened war if France did not change its intentions. On April 16, the French announced the formation of a new government under the leadership of Juan Almonte, the general and former foreign minister under the conservative rebel government. Despite imposing a new government on Mexico, the French tried to dissuade all wars among the Mexican people about the French intention. French and Mexican conservative allies decided to march in and defeat smaller Mexican liberal forces. Faced with a superior enemy, Corforio Diaz and Ignacio Zaragoza retreated towards Puebla, where they determined to make a stand. Puebla was a heavily defended city, with five forts surrounding it. On the northern sides were Loreto and Guadalupe, both located on hilltops. Zaragoza ordered a trench dock to connect the forts. On April 28, 1862, the French forces made their way to Puebla. The French were also under the false assumption that the Mexican population in Puebla was opposed to the Mexican liberals. The French entered the battle overconfident of their ability to win. Many of General Charles de Lorenz's forces were tested veterans from Algeria and Crimea. His Mexican allies suggested to make a march around Puebla and on to Mexican City, but the French general did not want to leave a major force in his back, threatening a supply lines to Veracruz. He decided to take the force, and assumed that his experienced men would easily take them. However, the Mexican army of, of Diaz and Zaragoza had battle experience from the recent Civil War. They were not a ragtag group of amateurs. The French forces 
arrived before Puebla at 5 a.m. on May 5, 1862, and by 10.15 a.m. the battle started with the French shelling the enemy forts. After an hour and a half of firing, the French attack with their infantry. The artillery had failed to have a significant effect due to their placement. The French forces suffered heavy casualties as they attacked Guadalupe and Loreto. The French regrouped and made another attack with a diversionary attack on the southeastern front to draw attention from the fort. The tactic worked briefly, with French forces able to climb the walls of Guadalupe. They were only able to sustain themselves briefly. Diaz defeated the diversionary attack. By 2 p.m., the French attacked a third time, with all reserves committed to the battle, but the artillery from low on ammunition could not support them. Rain started to fall by 3 p.m., creating a slippery and muddy soil, making it even more difficult for the French. After the final assault, Zaragoza ordered his cavalry to attack and allow the artillery to finish the job. The French had suffered a major defeat, but remained before Puebla to coax Zaragoza into an attack. But the Mexican general understood his man stood little chance in an open battle against the French, and he stayed put. After a few days, the French withdrew, and the Mexicans had gained, against all odds, a major victory against the French. Cinco de Mayo remembers the events of the Battle of Puebla in 1862. However, it's not a holiday in Mexico, and the U.S. version is born in California among its Hispanic population during the 1860s. Sadly, the following years the French were more successful and made it to Mexico City. Four years of war between Juarez and some French-Mexican conservatives followed. Eventually the Mexican liberals won. The war complicated the War of Rebellion greatly, as rebellious southerners wished to see conservative Mexicans succeed. The United States supported Juarez as best as they could. It was complicated. The Battle of Puebla was a major victory for the Mexicans, but in the end, the war had just started. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.